I'm Josh Sparks. My partner is David Snavely, and we will be going over the UML component diagram. A UML component diagram often refers to how, compo com how components interact in, with, in a system, more specifically how information flows through the system. Originally, UML, the, or the original UML component diagram often focused on physical, so how a file would, uh, how a paper would move into a file, or th and then from that file would move to different parts of the, on the office. But the UML2 specifically goes over uh, components of a software system and how they react with each other. A UML component diagram is m the main use is to double check if a system fulfills all needs of the different components. So if the components are uh, all talking with each other and all are able to get data and none of them are starving for any information, that all of the interfaces are mapped out and such. Uh, Generally, in, a in these kind of diagrams, it shows how information moves from left to right. So a left item will give information to an item on the right. The most important part of the UML component diagram is, of course, the component, which is often re referenced as a box with some text in it. And we will be seeing the information this is any, this can be anything that gives or receives information. So this can be a customer, it can be a database, it can even be a security check. And that this is a, this basic component is an interface. So an interface shows two components talking. So this customer is talking to this security or component one is talking to component two. A required interface refers to the idea that, an inter that this part of the interface is required. A customer is required to talk with security. They have to talk to security or they will not be able to interact with anything else. Security must check must take place before the customer is able to, must take place for the customer to interact with things. Next, we have a similar but op the, op the similar but opposite dependency where uh, one component must receive information from component two. So whereas component one had was required to give its information to component two, in this example, component two must give information to component one before it's able to do anything. You can think of it like this. A database must give information to a customer before a customer is able to do anything on the website and a customer has to give its information to security in order for the security to allow it to access any other information. So the customer waits on the waits on the database. The data the customer then has to input its information into security before it's able to do anything else. Next we have a port, which basically shows where information comes in to these different components. This diagram here shows a basic online shopping. As we can see here. The, on, the online shopping database is has to give its information to the customer. The customer is dependent on uh, information from the database. And then the customer has to go through security. So it has to, co it has to contact security, and but it also must wait for information from the database before it's able to act. So it gets the information from the database, and then talks to security, and security either accepts or denies it. Now David is going to talk to you about the pros, the cons, and our own recommendation 
for UML diagrams. Thanks, Josh. There are several pros and cons. First, we'll talk about the positive of the UML component diagram. It allows a visual representation of how data moves through a system. This is especially useful in large and complex systems where it can be very hard to understand where and how the data is moving through the different components and parts of the system. Another pro is it shows places where the data is transferred. This is very important when designing and having the different components to understand where the different connection points are and what type they are, whether it's a required or uh, there's a dependency upon data for a certain component. And that is exactly the third point. It shows data dependencies. That can be very complex in some of these large systems. And that is the huge benefit to a UML component diagram is fully representing how the data is moving through the system, its requirements, the dependencies, and being able to visually see it. Um, now that doesn't mean there aren't any cons. Um, so there are some negatives. The first is that it, it shows relationships over actual functions. So you don't actually see the details of how the code will work. It simply focuses on the relationships. Um, also, it does not describe what each component does. So it is very much a larger overview just to help map out the data and how things work. But used in conjunction with other methods, it is highly useful and effective. And that is one reason why we actually do recommend this UML component diagram being used um, because it is very useful in describing data for example, moving through the Ticket to Work system. Uh, specifically, what components provide info to what other components, for example, the team members to work on items or customers to have set up items. So in our sp specific example, um, the actual code may not be that complex or difficult, but having a full diagram that maps out the data, its connection points, how it communicates to each other, will be very useful and we highly recommend it as being one of the, one of the forms that we use uh, when describing um, and, and working through the Ticket to Work system. Um, lastly, here's our Works Cited page, um, what we use to create these slides. And we thank you for your time and listening to our UML component diagram.